Um, it's going to be perfect football weather, so I don't think, you know, we put it up in the team room today that no matter what the weather is, it's going to be football weather, so we can go out there and play ball. Manny, you didn't get to play two years ago at Oregon. How do you anticipate that environment to be? You kind of talked about Washington a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think it's a really cool place. Um, it's f how it's built, it's probably built to make it louder um, than the amount of people that are actually there, the way they built it, very smart. Um, but remember the last time being there and just being on the sidelines, I, I know it's a hostile environment, so um, their fans are going to be into it because they love football there. It's the only team that they have there that's a big football team there in Eugene. Um, and. Uh, they're gonna come ready to play too, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. And Rob, Rob Light was saying yesterday that it feels like that you trust him, and that means a lot more to him than just the walk. Uh, can you just speak about your relationship that you have with him and the way you feel about uh, working with him as your coach this year? Yeah, um, playing college football and and specifically the situation that uh, that I've been put in almost um, different OCs every year, two, new, two, uh, two head coaches now. Um, as a person and the type of person that I, I am, I'm a, you know, I don't go out, you know, I'm not a big people person, you know, like I like associating with people and things like that, but I would rather have a close group of friends that I hang out with and, you know, hang out, blah, blah, blah. And it's hard for me to trust people. Uh, you know, there's, there's a guard that you put up life that I've grown up living, it's just hard to trust people. Um, so it's hard to just put yourself in a situation where you're like, okay, another new OC, you know, with Coach Lindsey, here we go, here's, here's all my trust. All right, next year, Coach Napier, here's all my trust, you know. All right, are you, are you just going to bounce? You know what I mean? You, there's this game you play, and if you take a step back and just treat it as a business, then – you know, you figure it out. But he's somebody where, as a person, I can see his values and um, the things that he preaches and the things that he represents and, and uh, stands for. Um, it's beyond football. So, yeah, he has my trust. Um, and on top of that, the, my number one thing is he has my respect. And when you have my respect, you know, that's, for me personally, that goes much further than football or whatever. You know, it's just um, we have such a – close bond together um, just because we're on the same page about things um, and we believe in the same morals. There's certain specific things about the way that he communicates yeah. with you that, that engender that sort of message. Yeah, so we're both, uh, we're both the same. I mean, he'd probably tell you he's, there's some points where we're both of us, we can get pretty psycho. Um, just the passion and the competitiveness that we uh, present ourselves with. Um, and it can be a fault sometimes, you know, it's not always a positive, but the majority of the time, you know, being that competitive as he, as he is, is, is a positive. You want a coach that wants to win. You don't want a coach that's just going out there and playing football, calling plays. Um, when we mess up against the defense in a team period, he loses his mind because he just absolutely hates losing. Um, but, uh, but he's a competitive person. I'm a competitive person. And, and that's kind of where you start the, the melt to, mesh well or whatever and start to gel is when you know you have similar traits and uh, we have some similar traits so yeah I tried to illustrate an image to put in their head so that they can you know you think about with kindergartners, um, they don't read words. They like to look at pictures. So with all these young guys, I wanted to give them a picture instead of giving them words. So I, I told them to, to really take a look and, and truly see that at the beginning of the season when all of our goals were in front of us, you know, we have a chance to do something special. Um, when that was taken away from us, so when the picture was taken away from us from going to a Pac-12 championship and all these things, our attitude, you know, guys are like, dang, well, now we're playing to go to a bowl. When that picture was now presented to us again and now we have an opportunity and it's in our hands, we control it, what are you going to do with that? When someone's taken away from us so special and they're like, here it is, we're giving it back to you, now do what you may with it, what are you going to do with it? 
So it's it's on us. It's on us to go out there and be ready to play and 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 show up and, and not go there and you know start slow and you know I mean you guys know the story how it goes and and uh, we just we can't do that. We can't start slow. We understand the situation. I think Coach Herm has done a uh, incredible job of. Um, not making it to where, you know, it's like this thing that, you know, you got to be all amped up about, but it's not something that's like, you know, we know it's there. We're not like disregarding that it's there. So we're just trying to stay the course, stay level. Um, like I said, the, 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 the quote I always tell, tell um, the offense especially is the biggest enemy to success is complacency. So we got to just can't get complacent with anything and just keep pushing, keep, keep pushing. Yeah, I mean, they're an athletic team. They got some guys that make plays. They're a little beat up, but they got guys that are going to step up and make some plays for them. So um, they play really sound defense. I don't think that they're – they have some young guys on their defense, but they don't make young guy mistakes, if that makes sense. They they play under their coach, and they trust that their coach is telling them what to do and the right thing to do, and they do it. Um, and anytime you have that, you're bound to make plays. So um, just all about countering it. I mean, you guys know how we're going to play ball. We're going to run that rock, um, take our shots when we got to take the shots. Intermediate pass game is always there. Um, and we're just going to go out there and play to, you know, put points on the board. You said we uh, gathered you guys up early in practice at midfield. Was there any certain message with that? Yeah, I don't think that we started off practice. Um, we had a couple missed assignments, I know, on offense, a couple routes that we didn't run correctly. Um, I threw a bad ball to start off practice, like third play. You know, the, the the attention to detail and the focus just wasn't where – it was okay, it was good, but it wasn't where we wanted it to be. And uh, that was something that he just brought us up and was like, hey, let's, uh, let's make sure we understand that uh, we got to come to practice every single day, be ready to go to work, no matter the circumstances. You know, it was a little colder today than it has been all year long. And, you know, you start to see some guys, you know, get a couple goosebumps on their arms and things like that, and they think about it instead of just going out there and playing football. So that's that's all it was. He was just kind of like, hey, give you a little kick start. He'll be all right. He'll be okay. What about him? Oh, yeah. What that does for you as a quarterback, they have multiple, multiple options, I guess. Yeah, um, I mean, hell, all, all year long I felt that I've had those guys and I can rely on them. Um, I mean, specifically guys like Brandon who before the season I was telling you guys he just hasn't had much coaching. He hasn't um, been exposed to this type of environment. Um, you start to see him playing with a little bit more confidence. You know, he jumped over a guy at SC. He stiff-armed a guy against San Diego. You know, he's just playing with more confidence. And when you're playing where you're not thinking to mess up and you're just playing football, running your routes, and you're not thinking boom, 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 one, two, three, fourth outside step, I got to do this. And instead you're just bang. You know what I'm saying? That's when you start clicking. That's when offenses start clicking. That's why um, we're on the same page with some things because he's not – Guys like that, like Frank too, he's not they're not thinking. They're just doing what is the habit that they've created that they've do in practice. Um and and we're finally doing that and, and now you start to see that um everything's rolling a little bit more smooth, uh, because these guys are playing with more confidence. Jim Levitt had a really going at Colorado and he's trying to build it down for again. There's like the hallmarks of their defense. Yeah, um, I mean, they're very similar to um, – who would I say they're similar to? I would say in regards to Washington, um, they're very similar in terms of, like I said, their discipline. Um, they do what their coach to do, but they line up, we're going to run this, we're going to run a man-to-man -man here, we're going to show you we're going to run man-to-man, -man, beat it. You know, we're going to say that our guys are better than yours and you have to beat it. Um, they're going to pressure you a little bit here and there, try to get you off your guard a little bit, um, hold some guys at, uh, you know, word I'm looking for, sorry, I'm blanking. They're going to put the guys at the sticks. They're going to just sit there, and then they're going to throw some pressures at you and have the corners and the safeties catch them so that, you know, the pressure hopefully gets to the quarterback by the time you have these routes get in there or whatever. So um, 
you can tell that he's one of the coaches that cares and their players play like their coach cares because they care. So it's a, it's a direct reflection how they play of, of their coach. Oh man, long, long story. Um, um, yeah, so when I was getting recruited there, um, there's another kid, Morgan Mahalik, pretty good friend of mine. Um, I'll probably get ridiculed that I'll say this, but Oregon was like, that was a school I really wanted to go to when I was early on in high school. I really wanted to go there. Loved Coach Coach Helfrich, loved Coach Kelly. He was just here. Um, I went there sophomore year, I believe, won like the quarterback MVP of their like full camp that they had. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, after winning that, you know, I had no idea what recruiting really was. So I, after winning MVP at their camp, I was like, Going home, I'm like, yeah, they're going to offer me. You know, I'm going to Oregon, all this stuff. Um, ended up Coach Kelly leaving. Um, coach uh, Frost became the OC, I believe, when Coach Helfrich was the uh, head coach. And I guess he didn't like me as much as Coach Helfrich did. So they ended up not offering me. He called me on the phone and said, hey, I'm going to come watch you throw or whatever, um, whatever day it was when I was in high school. He came out. But he didn't come to my school first. He went to Marin Catholic, watched Morgan throw. I, like, saw on Twitter they offered him, and then he never came to my school. So then I was, like, always, like, all right, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to show these dudes what's up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, But, yeah, uh, I got recruited there. You, know, you asked the question, right? So, um, yeah. Is that grudge still there? Nah, I don't, I don't. I'm not a big grudge holder. I just I don't forget about it, but. It's there. I don't forget about it, but I just keep pushing. I just keep moving. So. Before about some old quarterbacks that you admire or watch, that sort of thing. Do you pay any attention to the other current college quarterbacks, or do you not have, because of the overlap, the opportunity to see like the Alabama quarterback? Oh no, I've been watching Tua. Okay. Tua been balling. What do you think of some of those guys? Him, him, or Oklahoma? Um, Kyler eating. Um, Minshew's eating. Um, Will Greer eating. Um, there's there's a few quarterbacks that you know they just bring a certain excitement to the game. Personally, I watch Alabama play, and I mean just the control Tua has. And, and that being said, you know if, if Jalen had to step in, he could do this. You know he's going to pick up right where they lay left off. So it's just that team is unreal right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I watched, watched a couple guys. I really like the way Minshew plays, um, plays with a lot of confidence. Um, he just is out there owning it. Like he's been in this league for five years and he just playing with a lot of confidence. So he's fun to watch. Um, Justin's pretty fun to watch. Big kid, throws the ball really well. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of talented quarterbacks in this league. There's a lot of talented quarterbacks around the country. Um, but what I do like to watch is I like to watch how similar offenses set up things differently. So I see a lot of concepts that we run, but different formations set them up, um, how they basically giving you just a different different presentation of it. And uh, I text Coach Likens like, hey, did you see the way these guys just ran flood? I'm watching the game right now. Like maybe we should think about doing this because I'm always a student of the game. So. Um, yeah, um, when I have the opportunity to, I definitely watch ball in my off time. You said you and Coach Mike, Coach Mike is being kind of feedback for some four-point cycle a lot of times. If a player comes over to the most recent coaches, they can't depress us. If you guys are going back and forth, is there somebody that would be like, guys, like... What do you mean back and forth? In a, in a good competitive way where you're just so amped up, it's kind of like, hey, just like you said, have that focus. Is there someone like in the offensive line or somebody that will say... Fired oh no, we never let it get to like one. We're never like like that with each other. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've always there's one thing that Coach G had always said, uh, and it's just always the next play. Think about the next play. You know, when something bad happens, just go to the next play. Um, and that's something that I've always positive in my head that I think about when anything negative happens is, you know, if we get on the phone and we're frustrated about something that happened on the field, I'll be like, all right, coach, I understand. Let's just move on to the next play. Let's go get this next one. Um, and we have a pretty good understanding of that. So there really isn't any, nobody has ever had to be, be like, you know, hey guys, relax, calm down or anything. So, yeah. Um, you 
obviously have been here for the time you know stepped on campus the time has become what he is now just what are some of the things what did he become um, what did he become just like the you know, ASU second season oh okay what what are some of the things you've learned from, learned from or do you think he's learned from like Kayla and tomorrow just the ways you've seen him grow and what he is now yeah, so with Eno, I think that what separates Eno from most guys is, uh, one, his knowledge of playing the position that he plays, his knowledge of understanding protections. He's not just out there breaking school records. He's out there in protection, understanding when a blitz comes or when the line makes an out-out call, he has to pick up a different guy. Like He understands those things. So um, being a good running back can consist of running the football, getting first downs when you need. But when you're a great running back, you can catch the ball out of the backfield. You can protect when the quarterback needs you protect. Um, and obviously you can run the football. And uh, he has all three of those aspects. Um, and he he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk about it. He doesn't, you know, we're not out here trying to accomplish all these personal accolades. Guess what? They're just coming. They're just happening. And it's because guys on this football team have a will and a want to win. And when you have guys that have a will and a want to win, it creates these personal accolades for everybody else. Um, and uh, that's that's as simple as that. He's a student of this game, um, busts his ass off in practice every single day, doesn't take reps off, and uh, and it shows on Saturdays.